I can say in the fish room where we have fish there's never a dull moment so don't mind the exercise behind me but let's come over here and take a look two things one being this is my steam ray tank and I have a couple of small baby steam rays there I have a bigger steam ray there which I call Blackie and I have Enrique and I have uh, Sapphire right here so if you notice in this steam ray in particular his colors look a little bit off this one definitely a little bit darker and this one right here, perfect. Now these two stingrays, so um, Sapphire and Enrique have been eating really well. A Blackie, the more aggressive male stingray, has been not eating or avoiding food. And I was indicated about a couple of days ago. So Sunday, I did a water change as usual, and I do this, I indicate how much water I'm gonna change in the tank. So that way I know how much I'm gonna change. Well today, his color has changed. That's why I'm gonna shoot this video. Well, two things you always have to recognize is when you have changes in your tank is water test and behavior. Water test and behavior. I'll tell you why. These two guys, females, are eating well, twist on candy. Sapphire's eating well. Blackie right there is not, and Enrique's eating well. Now, I did a water test, and you can see right here, which is right now my pH, my ammonia, my nitrite, and nitrate. Now, this one indicates that I need a water change. If you notice in this, what I did is I let it go a little lower than five minutes in this current image. This is my ammonia, obviously indicating that it's kind of high. And definitely, you need to water change right there. Funny enough, though, you would think that, well, if one steam ray isn't eating, all of them should be doing it, but not really. I did my water uh, uh, chain on Sunday, 50% of the water. It's now Tuesday morning, and there's some issues going on here. So I have to immediately act quickly. But that's testing, water tests, obviously, and second behavior. But what I'm going to do in this particular tank is I'm going to do a slow water test, so a water change. So a little water's coming in this bucket right here. I'm going to put another pump in here and have a tank drop down there. Now, you may ask, why am I doing a smaller water change? Well, the reason being is that because my pH is low, my water pH in my house is already 6.7. All right, testing, know what it is. So I know this one's definitely really low, so there's an indicator there. So what I'm gonna do is do a slow water change so it enables the fish to actually adapt more efficiently. If you do a fast water change, it can shock the fish, and guess what, you have dead fish. I don't want that. So slow water test, sorry, water change, not test, in this bucket. Obviously, I've done a water test, which is there. You see the indicators, and obviously behavior. So in the fish room, you have to act quickly because in stingrays, for sure, things can go really sideways very quick, but I'll shoot another video, see what's gonna happen after I do the water change slowly and retest the 24 hours after water change. See you guys soon. Okay guys, day two of the Stingray tank. Yesterday I showed, showed you that my pH was low and ammonia and uh, nitrate was a little high. So I did a water change about 20%, uh, maybe about halfway down. I did slow acclimation, sorry, not acclimation, slow water change. I'm used to acclimating fish, that's why I say it all the time. But I'm gonna do another water test. As you guys can see here, I got all the vials filled up to the proper level, and I'm gonna test my pH, my ammonia, my nitrate, and nitrite. And obviously, you guys don't have to watch me do it, but I'll take a video right now after I test it, wait that five minute window, and obviously before you test it, shake it up nice and well, and make sure that way you see what's going on. Okay, so now it's waiting time. So I got everything set up. This is your pH, ammonia, nitrate, sorry, nitrite, nitrate, is actually right here. So we're gonna wait five minute window and see actually what happens. Okay, and time is almost, it is up. So let's take a look at what we got. So as you can see versus yesterday, my water test, the pH is exactly what it should be about 7.6, so it could be a little high, but my pH and my kind of does run high. Obviously, ammonia is probably a little bit high, about 0.25 ppm, but that's okay. I can probably do a small water change. Uh, nitrites are perfect right there, zero. And nitrates, obviously, I have a little bit of a um, poop in my tank, but you know what? It's not too bad. It's about 20 ppm. So that small, slow water change actually helped your pH. So something to think about and consider, whenever you see things off your tank, 
always first indication is behavior. Now, if you test your water every day, that's fine, but I've learned in the past, testing water every day, all it does, you're chasing numbers all the time. pH can go up and go out down throughout the day, a lot of different factors in there, why? So always monitor it first, monitor behavior. As I showed you, Blackie there wasn't eating. So I knew something was up. He's usually pretty aggressive with the food, and I'll show you a video right now how aggressive he is at the food. So you take a look at what I mean by aggressive at the food. But I know someone was wrong. So what I said, okay, water test. That was my second thing to think about. So water testing the water to make sure what is off. I saw the pH was off. Ammonia was a little high. So usually most thing rates like a higher pH. Also, check your temperature too. Sometimes in certain cases, the temperature gauge can be off, but it means that your water's too cold. So if the water drops down to 73 degrees, most thing rates like about 79 to 80, then I know someone's wrong. So always go through a checklist and make sure what's going on. Lastly, what you can do is switch up the food. I typically feed shrimp tilapia. They're pretty aggressive at it, like I showed you in another video, but this time I switched it up and went for blood worms later on in the day. So that means I went through my checklist. One, always look at your behavior. So when you feed your fish, what's going on? What's happening? Are they eating? Two, water test something is off. Three, check the water temp. Fourth, maybe switch the food up because maybe they don't like that kind of food. Now in stingrays, you can say medication. I don't like medicate my fish. Actually, it's hard to medicate them pretty much, but I do this for a checklist for every fish, but always behavior, behavior. All right, guys, thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe. I will see you soon.